Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again, doing a bit of a video for, I guess, kind of an update on where Ice Spear is at, with a Deadeye Ice Spear during the Calandra and Sentinel event, which is a one week event um, that just incorporates both Calandra and Sentinel back into the game, and uh, it's pretty damn good, honestly. Um, so. What we have here is a Deadeye Ice Spear. I wanted to play either Ice Shot or Ice Spear, both absolute banger builds that uh, don't need much to work and can be like pretty damn starter viable and then have lots of room to grow and work on as you progress. Um, so I started out as Ice Shot, but then decided I wanted to be Ice Spear pretty damn early on. And at level 12, I did swap over to Ice Spear um, all the way through to right now where I'm almost level 90. And uh, Ice Spear, I've done a couple times before uh, as a pure self-cast. One of them was as a starter Deadeye, a, I don't know, like a year or something ago. And it was a really nice starter, maybe one of the best starters I've ever done. And that still holds true to this day. Uh, it is just a joy to kind of have this play style where your positioning matters a little bit, but then also uh, you freeze lots of things and once you actually get set up, you are just blasting. You have chain and you use snake pit to eliminate any pierces, so you just become a chain machine. Uh, and you have some Herald of Ice that can cascade and proc and just like kind of look really cool throughout the screen as well. And then freezing shit just becomes a huge defense in this type of a build where currently I'm almost level 90 and my defenses are basically paper thin, but it doesn't particularly matter because all you really do is kill things quick or freeze the shit out of them. And uh, it can be a pretty ranged play style, rather it even should be because you want to make sure the secondary form of your ice spear is activating. Um, so you want to stay fairly far away from things. Uh, but then if you really want, you can actually build some level of defense to um, end up taking some hits. And that's probably where I'm at with this character now, so I'll probably actually invest into some level of um, evasion, uh, maybe spell suppress, but that's probably not something I'm going to be doing on a one-week event that uh, doesn't have infinite amounts of time to scale. But normally speaking, I would probably do a bunch of evasion and some spell suppress and then just a fuck ton of damage, and that would be enough with around four or 5k life. Um, so up till now, level 89, things have gone really well. It's been good for Sentinel. It's been pretty decent for Calandra as well. Um, and it scales really nicely. Uh, if you want a just much more overall picture of Ice Spear, you can check the couple of previous builds I've put up on YouTube, because um, this one's only going up to, well, currently level 90. And it's gonna be a bit more of a how to get things going and um, discussion about the um, sort of viability of Ice Spear as a starter once again, which, as I mentioned, definitely is. Uh, so, what else needed to be mentioned? Um, it's a pretty flexible skill that can be done through lots of different ways, but I do believe Deadeye has the nicest package for it that lets you kind of change the way you play a bit and also enhance the original skill. So you do get Sniper's Mark at level 4 and I highly encourage you using that on anything that needs a few extra hits um, because then you start spreading all of your Ice Spears throughout the screen um, and you use Pierce early on so that you actually can hit things that are close up to you and um, then have some large scale clear. Once we get into uh, snake pit territory, that's when you have chain as well, and then you just start chaining everywhere instead. And then Deadeye's also got just enhancing the um, sniper's mark itself, as well as just being faster with Tailwind. Uh, it's also positioned pretty well on the tree because you can pick up lots of um, good projectile nodes and then uh, some aura nodes and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it just ends up being a pretty smooth build that doesn't need much investment. However, this version of the build at the moment is running a heat shiver uh, just because I got a lucky drop or some shit and uh, managed to sell some stuff and then uh, got a heat shiver for 60C. Uh, put that on and yeah, that's probably going to double your damage basically for the rest of the game because um, you will be freezing things pretty routinely, uh, especially if you spec into some of the freeze stuff and then um, you essentially double your damage with all that extra fire and it does keep up Trinity pretty much always. Um, as long as you're freezing things then Trinity itself will be uh, up 100% of the time since all it takes is a couple of elements and um, 
as long as they're kind of split evenly between them, which with the fire and cold portion, they should be pretty much all of the time. So we can start using Trinity as well. Um, realistically, if I was going to take it to another level as well, I'd be going for an extra curse. And you could also do some versatile things with this by um, having something like extra totems happening or um, an Arcanist brand setup, all kinds of stuff. But uh, in this case, I just ended up chucking in an extra Hydrosphere that is going to help chill some shit maybe with bone chill um, and give some power charge on crit that sort of thing as well um, and also the end game of the build will most likely go into eldritch battery but for now i've basically just solved mana by getting some mana regen in the form of uh, clarity and a little bit of mana regen on the tree and uh, that's still a viable enough option up until we actually can get the energy shield and the um, investment into Eldritch Battery and then become pure regen energy shield casting style um, batteries. For now though, that's kind of where the character's at and I do want to go ahead and show you what it looks like and uh, how we leveled it. This is a character level 89, want to buy new wrist, please send out. Bit of wrist problems, you know, classic Path of Exile action. Um, it's on the Sentinel Calandra event, so nothing too high level yet. Uh, it took me like 10, 11 hours to get through the campaign. I was level 75 when I beat Katava just because I was engaging the Sentinel and Calandra so much, and they do give you a lot of XP and you become pretty over leveled. It's a fun event. Both the event uh, mechanics are pretty damn fun, I think, anyway. Uh, the event should be a bit longer for us to enjoy it, but I don't know if they're going to extend it, so, you know, whatever. Maybe they come back in the future. We'll see. Either way, um, if you can't be fucked playing the event, you still almost have like probably a month of PoE maybe a bit less, on um, the main um, Tota League and uh, a version of Ice Spear with tattoos and all that will be fucking insane right now. If you do like a Heat Shiver with like maxed out Ice Spear using um, tattoos, extra proj, all the gear, all that stuff, you're probably like 100 million DPS and just have crazy um, play style. But for this one, it's pretty basic, nothing too special going on. Most gear slots are like 10c. Uh, and I spent maybe like a divine or two total on the character. And what we're dealing with at the moment is uh, Ice Spear. Like I said, I got this Corrupted Six Link that just has my colors and a bit of evasion stuff. Costs 20C. Uh, we are running Ice Spear, Spell Echo, Trinity, Ice Bite for Frenzies, and then also a bit of extra damage. And, you know, if you're going to do like pure endgame single target, it's probably Hypothermia, something like that. Or... Yeah, no, probably hypothermia. Uh, inspiration and GMP. Um, we have, what is it, eight proj at the moment. So GMP is pretty damn useful. And uh, yeah, all those projectiles can overlap and hit a single enemy at once. People say return proj can be pretty good too. I haven't tested it, um, but return proj with like Pierce may just end up overlapping a lot and giving you like twice as much damage. But well, I haven't tested it and uh, fuck it, it's fine. Um, the chain version is, I think, pretty good and uh, no pierce involved once you get a snake pit. Up until that point, you are based off of pierce and you've got to position yourself a lot more. And it can be a bit clumsy, but it's still an okay playstyle, at least for me. And um, yeah, once you get a snake pit, you then cannot pierce anymore and you have chain here and you have chain from Deadeye. Uh, you can even run chain in the main setup if you want. Uh, once you have enough damage, then it's possible because uh, it does lower your damage by a bit. So chain over here, we've got two proj, we've got um, that and focal point. My ascendancy pattern was I went focal point first and then chain and then two um, proj. Uh, so that's basically what's happening there. I then picked up a heat shiver like at level 70, something like that. So prior to that, didn't have, each, didn't have a heat shiver and you don't really need one. Uh, you can just go pure cold like I did that first time I played Ice Spear. So once again, check that reference if you want to. Um, but it will end up giving you 100% of cold as fire against anything frozen, which is pretty much fucking everything. So pretty useful. And that is what gives you Trinity. Uh, we then have Herald of Ice up here. Faster attacks and shield charge, and I'm running a haste at the moment. Uh, so my aura setup is haste, um, herald of ice, uh, high level clarity, and then low level precision and vitality. Um, and you can put clarity on your life and then fill out like grace instead. Um, or what I'll probably end up doing is getting rid of clarity, getting rid of inspiration, doing eldritch battery, uh, and getting some energy shield. But we'll try and get to that once I, um, 
look into the gear for it because it will cost a bit more gear a bit more money and stuff uh pure mana based playstyle doesn't require any real gear which is why we want to do that instead of eldritch battery for earlier game uh, i'm then using a pair of southbound gloves i picked up off the ground and hit with a vial so plus one frenzy on them pretty good um but don't know if southbound are the end game glove of choice uh, for now they're fine they do have that increased uh, freeze duration so it helps you freeze things a lot better um but we can instead do like focus car speed gloves which is probably what i'm gonna end up doing uh with some double damage focus on the weapons and shield uh but for now southbound pretty good with an extra frenzy because uh why not uh then just basic belt basic boots and um ring with lots of car speed and also an amulet that has been calandrified with a bunch of car speed as well so one of the perks of the event you can get a bunch of car speed from jewelry um in this case the only car speed i have is just from here i uh, haven't anointed those so you know it's at some sort of opportunity cost at the moment um but yeah you could get some pretty large things happening and then plus one cold absolute trash shield but is what it is plus one cold um and a plus one cold scepter that has bit of car speed bit of multi bought this thing for 10c gonna slam it see where that takes me and then um yeah maybe not upgrade anymore maybe still make an upgrade pretty humble gear though and it works really well i think anyway uh and then some flasks that just have evasion car speed etc as for the trajectory of the character um starting out we do take these proj nodes when they respect them later when we no longer need lots of increased damage but i was ice shot and just took these nodes and went down here and then started to go up i shot until level 12 went into ice spear ice spear with lesser multiple proj and pierce is basically the link setup and it feels okay once you have sniper's mark as well um, but ice shot will just be faster for most of the game until you swap into ice spear um, if you really care about fast and whatever but i was ice spear from level 12 with that setup it's good enough it will be um, clearing things and you will be having a good time but you know there'll be things to fix and it gets better and better as you get all of the tools for this um sort of setup going uh throughout the game so effective mark chain more pierce more crit more damage car speed etc fixing mana um, we have this over here for a bit of extra aura stuff we went over here for marks and frenzy um, just some crappy jewel uh all this all that some that some this some this i needed some strength unfortunately at the moment so a uh, little bit of strength um, and some freeze nodes and some other freeze nodes as well and then um, mana reserve of skills so initially i did take this and pass through here but once i got all the way over there i ended up getting this one and uh changing the pathing because i did need a bit of dexterity for my chest and then that's just what the tree looks like hmm yeah may end up going like this way or this way and then i'm um, unspecking this little area because it definitely is not currently correct get an extra jewel socket something like that in any case, that's basically it. Pretty simple stuff. Pretty basic uh, build. Ice Sphere, can't sing its praises enough. Great starter. If nothing changes, should be another great starter uh, for the new league. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm just going to keep playing it for a bit, see if I can take it to some more uh, higher levels. And um, I'm looking forward to playing more Ice Sphere in the future. Might start with it in the next league, but it'll probably be just on my starter list, if nothing else, um, and see where it goes. Uh, do love me some ice beer. So thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.